So Trap and Tone Challenge is over and complete and my husband and I look great. You should check out our little date night vlog on Relax with Blue to see a little bit of the change in his face because we ain't about to show you his body like that. But y'all see mine, okay? Y'all saw my transformation. I will be joining the next challenge which starts November 29th. It is Tabata 1 and 2 mixed together. It is 21 days of two workouts a day, all right, y'all? I am gonna hit it hard after Thanksgiving and I cannot wait to see what my end results will be because I am on this workout journey, honey. All right, so y'all go to teamlache.com and check that out. Also, don't forget to go to Peja and Amari. Use my link, y'all, so I can get my friendy. But go to Peja and Amari. There is a sale going on on all of the fitness wear and all of these new cute clothes and jackets that she's put on there. So y'all go and check that out. And uh, y'all don't forget about TLC products. I actually just started taking the sea moss. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm nervous. I've never taken sea moss before, but it's something that they just started to provide. I heard that it's really good for phlegm and all that type of stuff. So I am just starting it. I'm on my second day of using it. Uh, haven't noticed anything bad or good so far. You guys let me know if you tried sea moss before. But either way, y'all check out TLC products. It definitely aids and helps in the workout journey. The Nutriverse, I swear by it, okay? So yeah, y'all get down below in the description box and hit up those links. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I'm back for another video, y'all. This is Love After Lockup, all right? I'm gonna try to get through this, but my neighbors are playing music in their backyard extremely loud and it's irking me down to my spirit. So I'm gonna try to get through this video and hopefully you won't be able to hear the music in the background. I don't think you can because I'm mic'd adequately, but you know, you just never know. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start off with Scott and Lindsay. So Scott and Lindsay are talking about the messages between him and her ex on Facebook because Scott had to find out what type of woman Lizzie was. Lindsay, whatever her name is. I just kind of feel like, why do you have to find out from other people about a person you've decided to spend this amount of money on and bring her daughter and her and her little side piece, Tara Bell, to your house? Like, you gonna have all of these people in your house and now you wanna ask questions about whether she's trustworthy? You should have been asking those questions before you decided to move out here and buy a house and set up shop. It's a little too late for that now. Now you didn't made all the sacrifices. Now you've spent all of the money. Not all of it because it seems as if Scott isn't stupid enough to lose all his money in the process of trying to be with Lindsay. But still, you've done a lot already and now you want to question whether, you know, you should have made that decision or not by hitting up her exes. Like, that's just stupid to me. Very stupid, very childish. It, it, it just seems dumb to me. And if you have to go through all of that, why not be with someone who would be genuinely interested in you for you, Scott? He even said to her, like he started making so much sense, but he was like, after reading what she wrote in her little book, which was our situation exactly, I have to ask myself, what does she want from me? Okay, because it's not about me. When we talk to one another, it's not about what's going on with Scott. It's all about Lindsay and what Lindsay needs and what Lindsay wants. And I'm like, well, Scott, you mean to tell me you hadn't figured that out before you got into this situation? You knew when you got with that young girl, who was coming out of jail and needed somebody to help her, you knew what it was hitting for. Like, I just, I don't like the fact that he tries to put it all on her. Like, she's the only one with faulty reasoning. When at the end of the day, this situation was plain as day on your end, just like it was on her end. Okay, she's trying to get with an old ass man that she can control with her, you know what I'm saying? Because she can control with her, you know what I'm saying? And he's trying to find him a young woman that he can control with his wallet. That, that, that's all. That, that's all this is. And if everybody would just be upfront about what they here for, we wouldn't have any issues. But she threw out that there was some comment made about lame sex and her being a psycho. I don't know what that was about. They didn't, you know, expound upon that. But either way, it's annoying to me that Lindsay is always trying to be the one that's right. Like always trying to go in on him and check him about shit like he's so wrong. When you having your little girlfriend move her trailer into his, uh, his driveway. Like, you flaw already. You was up in the attic making out with her while he was downstairs putting stuff together for your daughter's room with his bare hands. Like, you flaw as... And you got the audacity 
to be on here like you have to stop this and this is so wrong and da 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 da. Please stop, Lindsay. Please stop. You work on my nerves too. Okay? But I like how he said, to me, it seems like it doesn't matter who's taking care of you, whether it's me or some other poor schmuck. You was going to get some old man to take care of you. And it's not about me. For me, you know, I'm, I'm interested in you. You're beautiful. And, and, and when I'm like, then it could have been any old beautiful codependent ass girl who needed an old man to take care of her as well, Scott. I think both of y'all are using each other. And none of this shit is about the real person. It's not about who Lindsay really is. Because if it was, why would you want to be with somebody that you can't trust? That don't make no damn sense. They both get on the phone, you know, with their respective friends to talk about the situation. And she feels like he's completely changed on her. I said, well, bitch, you was never who he thought you was. <laughs> so at least you got him as he was supposed to be at the beginning. You've been lying. I, I can't take her, y'all. She really annoyed me talking about he don't have no money. I hate when people who don't have anything want to talk about how somebody isn't rich enough. You don't have enough money for me to be with you just for your money. Oh, he doesn't? He got a house and somewhere to put your daughter up with her own room, bitch. You couldn't accomplish that. You don't have that. You was going to go live with your mama, okay? So the fact that she kept saying that, I was just so aggravated talking about he don't have, he ain't got no money. No, you ain't got no money, okay? Which is why you're here, okay? Sean and Destiny, all right? So Destiny left Sean in his car with his credit card and she's running to stay with her sister, Brittany, who is going to lie to Sean about knowing where Destiny is. He's so stupid. I don't know why he would believe anything her sister had to say. Obviously, she's going to have loyalty to her sister and lie to you about Destiny's whereabouts as she's driving around in your car with your credit card. But either way, we thought that Destiny might have been pregnant. Sean thinks that Destiny might have been pregnant. But oh, no, she doesn't take good care of herself. She drinks like a fish and she probably eats terrible food, you know, stressed out a lot just doesn't take good care of herself you can tell by her lower stomach area that she don't take good care of herself you know either way she had inflamed intestines not pregnancy okay y'all I'm so over Destiny and Sean when he called asking the sister Brittany about where she was and she was like I don't know and it's like well you know she got this court case coming up right I'm still on the line for the 50,000 nobody cares Sean this is what you did, okay? You put yourself in this situation. Destiny says that she's pissed off about him because he's still lying about talking to Kelly. Well, your dumb ass is the one who thinks that you're somehow gonna make him not talk to her. They have six kids together. She's the baby mother of six of all of his, all of his children. Not just six of, all of the kids are by this one lady and you seem to think they're not gonna have to have any conversations with one another. You're stupid. You're an idiot, okay? And you set yourself up. Where are your kids, Destiny? Can we talk about that? Where are Destiny's kids? Who's raising Destiny's kids? Why are we not asking her questions about the welfare of her children? Y'all, I'm sorry, but she just really works on my nerves. Mad about him talking to Kelly, talking about Kelly's name isn't saved in the phone. It's like, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? You know he gonna talk to the lady. They got six kids together and none of the kids are grown. It don't matter that they old enough to talk to their daddy by themselves. You still have to talk to the parent about what's going on with the kids. I don't want him eating this. He's punished. He has practice at this time. Like children are not supposed to be responsible for their own raising just because you pissed off because you don't want him to talk to her, which is so ridiculous. Oh my gosh. She works on my nerves, y'all. So Quaylen and Chevelle, y'all. So Chevelle's mom called her cousin to come and talk some sense into her because even though Quaylen left, Chevelle's mom can tell that if Quaylen comes back, Chevelle will take him back. The way she kicked her shoes off and fell out on the curb lets everybody know that if he decided to come back and whisper sweet nothings into her earrings, then she would probably take him back. So he comes over to talk to her. He's talking about how he told her what Quaylen was going to do because he was in jail. He know how it is. What I didn't understand is they make Quaylen out to be the bad guy while saying you did exactly what he did. Like, <laughs> what? What are you talking about, cousin? Okay? Like, you know what it is because you did the exact same thing to whatever girl you thought you was in love with before you got out of jail. Chevelle says maybe she'll just be single for a while. That's what everybody wants her to do. Be single and get yourself together so you can stop looking for a man who is not your daughter's 
father to take care of you and your daughter. I just want you to stop, okay? I want you to take care of yourself. If you find a man that is willing to do that, that is a blessing that is great. But you have to be a whole ass woman before you get that. Because whatever man you bring into your life until you get your own shit together is going to use you and only make more of an issue and trauma to your daughter. It's only going to be more issues for your daughter if you bring another man into her life that's not ready for all that you're trying to put on him. I need somebody going to help me take care of my kid. Take care of your own damn kids. Take care of your own damn self. Stop trying to find somebody to take care of you and take care of your own life. Okay. Oh my God, like, geez, Louise, y'all work on my nerves with that. So because Quaylen took it all for granted, they want her to delete Quaylen's number from her phone. And she does it, but I'm like, she know that number by heart. Please believe that, okay? She can delete it all she wants to. If he call her, she know what the number is. Sarah and Michael, y'all. So she goes to pop up at michael's hotel room i don't know how you pop up at a hotel room like it ain't your apartment it's a hotel room fool okay but anyway she shows up at his hotel room she's like oh i wonder how many women paid for this you know thirty dollars here thirty dollars there i'm like yeah bitch you know what it's hitting for you know how it work i don't know why you being petty about it but either way they sit down and talk and she wants to talk about the court proceedings they have the next day she wants full custody. He wants to fight her on it. She's like, why are you trying to fight me when I'm the one that actually has full custody? You are not here. You don't live here. Why do I have to call you and ask you or need your permission or need signatures for you when you're not here? Okay, he doesn't seem to understand that. For him, it's just about you taking his kids away. It's like I can't take something away from you that you don't have. <laughs> You don't have the kids, fool. What he doesn't understand is this is so she can make decisions for her kids without needing his permission. That's really what this is about. If she's the sole proprietor, the sole provider, you know, the sole parent for the children, she doesn't have to check in with him about anything. And she really shouldn't have to because he's not there. He's not around. He's out here trying to free his mind and puss. You know, it's amazing to me how you want to get all territorial over your children, but you don't want to be there to take care of them. It don't matter that I ain't here. I'm still their daddy. Like, what? No, it does matter. It absolutely does matter, okay? Sarah talks about the last time she slept with Michael, which was the last time he came in town with Maria. She says it was closure sex. I say it was drunk, pathetic sex, but, you know, whatever you want to call it, all right? He says he may not show up to court the next day. I said, oh, wow. So then they'll just take your kids away by default because you didn't show up. Child, whatever. Then we get into Michael's issues and his ailments, how he has devil dick. That's what they say about him. I said, did we need to know that? And then he meets up with his homegirl, Haley. OK, and he talks about how he's not messing with crazy ass Maria anymore. I'm like, is that because you feel like you deserve better than a mustache? You don't. But I'm just saying it's probably because you didn't got a little fame feeling yourself. Think you can do better than Maria after we finished pointing out that mustache she had. Also, because she didn't care about getting you locked up again and you care about your freedom because there's puss out here. There's no puss in there. You can't keep having sex with the lady guards. They get all upset and then take commissary from you and search your life. It's too much going on, you know, when you go back to jail so he's trying to stay out of jail he says he needs to clear his head and he does it with Haley and I was just like oh god he's such an asshole he's such an asshole like you wish he cared about his kids you wish you saw all of this determination and interest in his children you know because to me it seemed like you only want to be a dad when the camera's around you only want to be a dad when you can show somebody that oh look I'm playing with my kids now I'm gonna leave and not see him again until the next time we tape you ain't shit, Michael. Lamar and Andrea, y'all. Another, another situation that pisses me off. So Lamar takes Priscilla to meet his other daughter, whose name I forgot and didn't catch. So I'm just going to call her the older daughter because he only has one other daughter, okay? They meet up. I didn't think she was going to meet up with him, but she loves him and she wants to spend time with him. But she's angry with him for the way he wasn't there for her her whole life. And then when he gets out, he's able to give the life she wanted to Priscilla and he's letting Andrea keep them apart. So it's a lot going on right now. And the daughter had a lot of feelings and emotions. I also didn't like the fact that he left Priscilla and her to talk to one another. 
you know, alone first. Like you could have got that ice cream on your way there and left Priscilla with a producer so you could talk to your daughter first and get some understanding with her. But she was very sweet to Pr Priscilla. Priscilla's a sweet little girl. Priscilla was like, I'm happy to see you. I'm glad I finally got to meet you. You know, like smart and sweet. And I think that by God's saving grace, she might actually have a chance in this life to be somewhat normal, even with Andrea as her mama. Okay. So after Priscilla and the older sister finish having a moment together, he comes back and they spend more time together. But basically she tells Lamar, he needs to get Andrea's ass together. If we're going to spend time together, you have to tell her that and be honest with her and tell her what it's going to be. And he says, after seeing both of his daughters spend time together and, you know, start to form a relationship, he will not let Andrea get in between that again. I said, yeah, we'll see. So Andrea and um, Tennyson go to talk to one of the mission people at the Mormon church that they go to. OK, I think his name was Michael or something. And she's one of those people that put on. So she brings Tennyson here so this man can convince Tennyson that he should go on this. Um, so she takes him to Michael so that he can be convinced that the mission is what he needs to do. So in the Mormon religion, apparently, you know, when you were a young man, you do go and do a mission for a couple of years. You travel around. It's something amazing for you to partake in. But at the same time, Tennyson doesn't want to do it. I don't know if Tennyson feels that strongly about the Mormon religion the way Andrea does, first of all. Second of all, what I have noticed is that he doesn't want to leave his little sister there in the turmoil of Andrea and Lamar and all of the fussing and the fighting. Okay. And I was just like, wow, Tennyson, the fact that, you know, you make it about Andrea and Lamar, when we all know that Andrea is the primary reason why there's so much fussing and fighting going on in that damn house. Lamar will be somewhere not saying nothing, doing his music, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Minding his own business. Here she come with the screaming and hollering because she don't know how to handle her emotions or have a calm conversation without flipping the hell out. She needs to go to therapy. OK, but Tennyson says it in front of Michael. I don't want to leave because I don't want to leave Priscilla here with you and Lamar. I'm scared for what will happen to her if she's left alone with y'all with all the fighting and the fussing that happens. I don't think it's healthy for her. And Andrea was like, so what are you trying to say? We're gonna abuse her? Like, oh my God, like that's not what it is. And you need to just listen and you need to go on this mission and I'm not taking no for an answer. Tennyson gets up and walks out. He says, you don't seem to understand. This is not about you. This is not about you. And I wish you would actually hear what I'm saying. She gets upset that he gets up and walks off, says that he embarrassed her in front of Michael. He like, I don't care. OK, you brought me here and he needed to hear the truth. And the truth of the matter is I am scared to leave my little sister alone with the twos of y'all's. And I was just like, damn, Tennyson, you're an adult. Like he don't need to go on this mission if he don't want to. I don't think that he's going to be, you know, a drug addict by the end of the summer because he didn't go on the Mormon mission, you know. Andrea's crazy and I'm just grateful that these two children have made it thus far with common sense because to me both of the older children and Priscilla seems to have more sense than Andrea I don't know what that's about okay but to me Andrea lives in la la land and facts don't really matter in that place all that matters is her in the Mormon tradition after she realizes she can't drag him in you know because Tennyson's damn near a grown man at this point you can't drag him in by the arm so she says she's gonna give him a minute but he's gonna go on this mission. And then she walks away and that's that. But yeah, y'all, Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup was good, y'all. It was real good. I'm enjoying it. How about y'all? They pissing me off, but it's an enjoyment. It's an angry enjoyment. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I ain't. Subscribe to Relax With Blue. I'll see y'all in the next one.